Hi, my name is Brian O'Keefe. I'm a Principal Neptune Specialist Solutions Architect at AWS, and I'd like to welcome you to a new series titled Graph That. In this series, we will take public data sets and convert them to a graph model optimized for Amazon Neptune. Amazon Neptune is a fast, reliable, fully managed graph database service that makes it easy to build and run applications that work with highly connected data sets. The core of Neptune is a purpose-built, high-performance graph database engine. This engine is optimized for storing billions of relationships and querying the graph with millisecond latency. One common request from customers is for assistance creating their graph database model. So we hope this series will inspire and educate on the subject. Now let's get on to our first episode. In this episode, we are going to take the train routes of the United States National Railroad Passenger Corporation, also known as Amtrak, Amtrak's network has over 500 rail stations in 46 of the 48 contiguous United States and three Canadian provinces. We are going to build a graph to determine routes to get between any station. This is not a huge graph by many standards, but we are going to make it a little challenging by putting a limitation on ourselves. We aren't going to use geospatial information, so we cannot use that to help us navigate the graph. This is going to be a pure graph traversal exercise. First, we need to start with data. We have two CSV files of data, a list of all the train stations serving Amtrak in the network in a CSV fi file called stations. This has the full name, a station code, and a label called train station. We also create a unique ID for each node by prefixing the station code with TS, short for train station. We use this prefix because Neptune requires the ID column to be un unique throughout the entire cluster. So if we add other data sets where the unique identifiers overlap with station codes, this will help keep them globally unique. Second, we have a file listing all the route segments connecting any two train stations together. This is a file called routes. This again has a unique ID where we generate by, appeal by appending values that uniquely describe the segment namely the two stations and the Amtrak route name, as two stations can be connected on multiple Amtrak service routes. For example, I live in Rochester, New York, and our train station is connected to Buffalo and Syracuse on three different routes, the Empire Service, Lakeshore Limited, and the Maple Leaf. All three of these connect to the same stations from Rochester using the same tracks, but they are different overall routes that happen to overlap in this segment. Here we're using a Neptune notebook, which is a Jupyter notebook with custom magics that can be installed in your AWS account to make it easier to interact with Neptune. We use the Neptune bulk loader format to easily load this data into an Amazon Neptune cluster I have created. You can see that the data loaded in about six seconds and it took and it loaded about 3,290 total records with no errors. After we load this data, we can start writing simple queries like this to see all the cities that we connect to. However, we will quickly discover we have an inefficiency issue because a number of overlapping route segments. Within just two hops of Rochester, we have over 18 potential ways to travel to four potential stations, BFX, which is in Buffalo, Rome, New York, Utica, and Erie, Pennsylvania. Here we can see the trains network in upstate New York, but this is just the Empire service line. We also have the Lakeshore Limited and the Maple Leaf. Now we're going to take that same uh, query that we ran to only look at two hops from Rochester. And now we're going to look at nine hops from Rochester instead. And we're going to use the query profile option to show us the statistics and, and the execution plan rather than just the results. So we can investigate the magnitude of this query. So when we scroll down to the relevant part in the statistics, we can see that there are actually 255,000 paths that need to be tracked 
in memory. Therefore, we're going to take an additional step of adding a new edge to consolidate these multiple routes into a single connection. And we're going to call it, we're going to label this edge has routes to. When we run this query, you could see that it creates 1,196 new bidirectional edges between two cities. You don't actually need bidirectional edges. You can handle traversing either direction at the query level, but for simplicity, we are taking this approach here. Now, if we check that same query for nine hops from Rochester, but using the, the new edge that we created, we can see that there are only 22,000 paths that we need to track in memory, as opposed to the 255,000 paths that we had before. This is much more reasonable, but once we hit highly connected, interconnected stations like Chicago or the East Coast, we're going to quickly start growing exponentially again. So let's run this again now with 12 hops instead of nine. And again, we're running it with the profile option so that we get all the statistics. And if we scroll down, you can see that it took, we have now have 524,000 routes that we need to track. So again, if we try to, if we try to grow, go out too far, like in this case, going cross country from Rochester to Los Angeles, we are going to see that we're going to run out of memory because there are still too many potential paths to explore and to be retained. So here you can see this query in this language, we're using Gremlin here. So we're starting out with a train station code of Rochester and we're gonna go repeatedly follow these has routes to and simple path just means don't retrace your steps until we get to the train station code for Los Angeles, LAX. And we wanna return five paths. And you can see that we cannot complete this because of memory limitations. So let's think how we can further reduce the problem space. One thing we know is that railroad lines are generally straight lines with sequential stops. And occasionally, two different routes intersect at certain stations. It is those stations where the routes intersect that are important. Therefore, let's write a query that will identify stations that connect to three or more other stations. So here's a Gremlin query that is going to calculate this. And so you can see we're looking for any station where it has more routes to that we're, after we do duplicate them and count them, it's greater than two. So you can see we have about 101 of our 500 or more stations, or 500 plus stations, connect to three or more other stations. So what we want to do is we want to add a second label to these stations, right? If you remember when we bulk loaded it, we created that station called, we created the label called um, train station. Now we're going to add a second label to these stations called junction. One of the things that's nice about Neptune is that when you're doing property graph data, as we are here, you can switch between two different languages that we support, both Gremlin and OpenCypher. In this case, we're going to switch to OpenCypher here just because it's much easier in that language to add a second label. So first, let's, let's make sure that our equivalent query to what we had just written in Gremlin, you know, that we have the equivalent here in OpenCypher. And so you can see the results look the same. There's also 101 entries. So we're going to modify this query slightly to add this um, set st colon junction. So what this means is it's going to take this train station node that we identified, and we're going to add a second label to it called junction. So we're going to run this query and we get that back result because we didn't ask for anything in return. Um, and so here we, let's go back and look at what these junctions are. If we go back to the map here, we can see that some of these junctions are obvious. Albany, Chicago, 
Cleveland, Everett, Washington. We could clearly see those on the maps. But the way that we are calculating these junctions is a bit naive, and we are actually making more junctions than we need. Notice here that the Syracuse station has only one set of tracks running through it, but because the Empire Line makes a stop at Rome, but the Lakeshore Limited does not, technically Syracuse has three connecting stations, Rochester, Rome, and Utica. We could introduce an optimization that detects those two are in a straight line, but we'll keep it simple for this video and we'll just include that in our model. We also know that the track between any two junctions is essentially a straight line. So we can add a shortcut between two junctions. And we're going to create a new edge called connecting junction. We're going to run this query and we can see that it's creating 342 new edges that connect those junctions that are adjacent together. Now let's try to get from Rochester to one of these stations that's a junction. So we're going to go to LAX. So it could show we're going across country here. And when we run this query, we can see that it, it's pretty efficient, right? And it's showing the 10 shortest paths. Now shortest isn't in terms of distance. It's in terms of the number of junctions between. So remember, we have no concept of distance here. It's just a straight graph query. But you can see we had success, right? We found 10, 10 different ways to connect from Rochester to Los Angeles. But what if we wanted to travel to another station that wasn't a junction, right? So our destination here was a junction, train, sto train station with the code LAX. But now we need to add an extra step where once we get to the junction, to each junction, we need to check to see if it's actually connected to San Diego. So let's try to run this query. And I'm going to pause this while this query runs as it's going to take a while. Okay, this query ran for two minutes, um, which is our timeout. And we could see here that we got an error message that the time that the query timed out. So it wasn't able to complete all that work within the two minutes that it had that it was allowed to. There's, the reason is there's still too many options when you're checking all the junctions to see if they're near, near the station that you have. So we're going to think about some more efficiencies that we can make. Let's look at this example of Albuquerque, New Mexico. When we are searching station to station to find the nearest junctions each time, we're looking at numerous hops each way. What if we pre-identify the closest junctions for each station? If we added an explicit edge to each of its junctions in either direction, then the engine knows it's always one hop, never multiple hops from a junction to a station, and it is no longer an indeterminately long search. And of course, we still have that connecting junction edge between the two adjacent stations. So here's a query where we're going to calculate and add the edges to the nearest junction from each station. So we're going to start with the train station that is not labeled junction, right? So these are all the train stations that are not junctions. That's our source. And we're going to follow the has routes to edges outward until we reach the nearest junction. And that is going to be our destination. And so then we're going to add an edge that goes from each source to each destination and it's going to add the label has junction so we run this we're going to see that there are 737 edges that we've created from each station to its nearest um, junction but in order to simplify our final query uh, we also want to add an edge from each junction to itself with that same label right because obviously a junction is the closest its nearest junction and so those 101 junctions we have, now we're adding essentially a circular edge that goes to itself, showing that same has junction function. And so now we can write a single query um, that is going to show us the 
10 shortest, now this is in terms of junctions, not necessarily miles, paths that go from any stage, train station to any other train station. Because again, it's going to start at the train station. It's going to find its nearest junction, found that has junction right, the edge we had. It's going to repeat the connecting, connecting junctions until it finds another junction where there's an incoming edge called has junction. And again, the big difference here is it knows it's only one hop. It has the proper train station code. And then to show the full path, we're going to show that, you know, tra traverse all the way to that train station. And we're going to return that path by the by the codes of the stations in between. So when we show the output here, we can see that there are now, again, the 10 shortest paths in terms of number of stations it's connecting to. And it's very fast, right? We can look at our query metadata and we got those results in about 183 milliseconds. So let's look at this query result on a map. You can see that we're starting up here in Rochester to Buffalo, down to Cleveland, over to Toledo, to Waterloo, Indiana, to Chicago, to Joliet, Illinois, down to St. Louis, over to Kansas City, all the way over to Fullerton, California, and then down to San Diego. In this episode, we learned how to take a transportation network with many long linear paths, like the Amtrak train network, and enhance it with additional edges and labels to reduce the complexity to make it much higher performing. The basic graph, with its numerous edges and segments, could not calculate long paths in under two minutes. And with a few transformations, we were able to calculate multiple long distance routes in under a quarter of a second. If you have an open data set in mind, you'd like to see transformed into a graph model, or a use case you'd like to see prototyped, please let us know in the comments of this video or reach out to me on LinkedIn. I'll have the URL in the comments. Again, this is Brian O'Keefe, AWS Neptune Specialist Solutions Architect, and thank you for watching. Keep on the lookout for our next episode of Graph That.